most of the time in our business, we know how to solve the problem. We just know, right? But sometimes in order to truly solve the problem, we have to put it in the hands of our stylists. So asking them what their thoughts are and how they would like to resolve the issue or moving forward, what is their plan to create a different result is going to help them develop their own problem solving skills. Hello and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Nowakowski. I'm a salon owner, educator, mindset, and leadership coach that helps salon owners go from overwhelmed and burnt out to motivated and empowered. It is my mission to help you systemize your business, generate more profit, and create a career that you love. Join us every week to learn about the small shifts you can make to elevate your business regarding mindset, marketing, social media, business systems, and so much more. This week, I'm so excited to give you a sneak peek into my newest program, the Elevated Salon Owner Collective. This is a monthly membership for salon owners who are ready to regain freedom in their business, and I loved witnessing all of the growth my students have experienced. Every other week, we deep dive into topics that I know all salon owners need to improve. We had a really great conversation about building your conflict resolution skills earlier this month, and I wanted to share it with you. Here is that session. Hello, everyone. Hi, how are you? Today, we're talking about conflict resolution, which I feel like is a huge struggle for so many salon owners. Not only like resolving conflict between team members, but also being able to address different things that are not going our way inside of our salon. I feel like this is a huge stress for people. I would like everyone to share what their biggest fear is when it comes to dealing with conflict with your employees. What's your biggest fear? What scares you the most about having to resolve issues that are happening inside of your salon with your team? So I definitely agree with that. Coming across wrong um, is really um, big for me. I don't know. I'm definitely, I have like the flight response. So I tend to always just put everything off um, and let everything kind of blow over and then it all explodes. (laughs) But I've been, everything is really good right now. So Um, Yes, I definitely have a few things that I've been putting off or figuring out how I'm going to tackle. Um, But yeah, otherwise. I think something else that's really powerful, especially when it comes to conflict resolution, is also training and teaching our team how to resolve conflict with us. Because so many team members are so afraid to speak up or share concerns or even address things with the salon owner because they have a lot of fears around that too. Uh, Afraid of like, you know, stirring the pot or afraid of getting fired, afraid of not being liked by the owner. So I think another thing to really focus on for the next two weeks is really sharing how your team can, can communicate with you as the leader on how to resolve the conflicts that they have within the salon. Even with other team members as well. I mean, there have been so many situations where I have let a team member go. And then I'm sure all of you have experienced this where you let a team member go. And then all the people inside of the salon are like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you let her go. Or, oh my gosh, I, you know, I had this experience with this person or, you know, this happened, but they never address it with the leader because they're afraid. They're afraid to even start, you know, trouble amongst their peers. So I think that's something too, that is something to look at inside of your salon. Let's talk about why conflict resolution skills are important. Developing conflict resolution skills is essential for navigating interpersonal relationships and achieving productive outcomes in difficult situations. So we're going to go over some strategies today that can help you develop your conflict resolution skills. So I want to say that these skills, leadership, conflict resolution skills, emotional intelligence, most of the time, these are things that we're not born with. These are all learned, and these are all things that have to be practiced and developed, these skills. And as a leader, it's great because every single situation that happens inside of our salon is going to help us grow and navigate these things that are going to make us better on a regular basis. 
And being in a leadership role, we get to experience more of these uh, quote unquote negative you know, situations, which can really help develop these skills at a rapid rate. And I always like to say that we're never perfect. We're never going to be perfect all of the time. But as long as we are pushing forward and we're really truly utilizing and navigating these things to become better, that is the power of really having a salon. Having a salon is, and I just had a discussion with somebody in our group about this because it's a financial struggle at times. And sometimes we ask ourselves, like, why are we doing this? Like, why do we do this? Um, Especially when we're at the lowest of lows. And I truly believe that having a salon is, or any business is a spiritual experience. It is one of the ways that you can truly grow your capacity at a rapid rate, because we have all of these things that happen that help us develop these skills that truly make us a better human being if we do it right. And It really is something that is going to give you purpose. It's going to bring fulfillment for you. And it's going to truly help others inside of our industry and outside of our industry, depending on, you know, how you utilize these things that you learn. So when it comes to conflict resolution skills, again, yes, we have to develop these skills for us as a leader. And we have to develop them so we can better suit and lead our team. But it's also something that we can help our team develop and help them become leaders in themselves with their own business. I think, too, one of the things about conflict resolution that is really powerful is when we teach and help our team develop these skills, it really does give us freedom because then we're not holding their hand when they come across issues with their clients right? How many times have you had to jump in and handle a client situation because your team member wasn't suited or didn't have these skills developed to handle it on their own? So when we can start coaching our team, which is what we should be doing as salon owners, coaching them, developing them, help them grow, bringing awareness, creating aha moments and um, light switch moments for their business and for their, their capacity as well. So one of the things that we have to really focus on when it comes to developing, and this is, I think, the number one part of developing these skills is practice active listening. I think a lot of people in general don't listen to listen. They listen to respond. And when we're listening to respond, we're not actually taking in what the other person is telling us, and we're not giving them the opportunity or ourselves the opportunity to really put ourselves in their shoes and be empathetic. And we're not really giving them the opportunity to truly share what they're what they're needing to share because we're only focused on our response. And I think too, sometimes as leaders, like we can, you know, hear something that isn't very pleasant from our team. And we immediately think we have to respond in the moment and we don't. We can take time to actively listen and really kind of give ourselves time to take in the information that they're sharing. And we can also have our team do this as well and pause and say, you know what, I really want to take in what you shared with me today. I would like some time to kind of think this over and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. I think when we aren't actively listening and we're only listening to respond, it doesn't necessarily give us the opportunity to truly give the response that the person deserves or the situation deserves. So we don't have to take everything on in that moment. We can give ourselves grace and give ourselves time to reply and to respond in a way that is appropriate for each situation. So we want to make sure that we're giving our full attention while we're speaking, paying attention to our body language, making sure that we don't have like a mean look on our face, that we don't have our arms folded, that, you know, we don't have our hands on our hips, that we are actually exuding body language that is open and that is a positive form of body body language instead of it being kind of closed off because body language is going to be a large percentage of how you come across when it comes to this sort of conflict resolution. Um, You know, I know a lot of people joke about having resting bitch face, but as a leader, this is something that we do have to be conscious of because we have to remember 
our capacity for success and our ability to share and to say what we need to say is much greater than our team members. And it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of breaking through fear sometimes to even speak to you as an owner. So us having that larger capacity for success, we have to understand that body language, our inflection, our tone, everything is going to create that experience for that stylist. And that's what's going to build trust. And I I sound so repetitive, but we know that building trust is one of the most important things for retaining your team and for your culture and for future shares. So if we don't have that trust built with our team members, then when things need to be addressed or conflicts need to be resolved in the salon, it's probably going to build and build and build until it's a reactive mess, where if we have that trust built, then those conversations are easier had and quicker to be had, and that resentment isn't built up, and that person isn't you know necessarily th- like feels like they need to quit or they're pu- pushed to quit, right? I have a story where I was, when I first opened my salon, I was very reactive. I was a terrible leader. I definitely made a lot of mistakes inside of my leadership. And I let a lot of bad behavior happen because of the fear of loss of revenue because of certain stylists who were just bullies in my salon, but they brought in a lot of income. And one of my top stylists, you know, she ended up quitting because she felt so bullied inside of the salon and she felt like she didn't belong. Now, if this person had had that trust built with me, or if I were to actually have listened to what she had said in the past, probably would have retained her for a little bit longer, but instead she ended up leaving without even talking to me first. Um, You know, she signed a lease on a suite. She did all of these things. And I feel like this is what kind of happens all the time in our industry is that, you know, these people working for us, we sometimes are clueless to how they're feeling in our business. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I just want to let you know that I signed a, I signed a lease on a suite and I'm going to be leaving. It's my last day. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, where did this come from? Like why I feel like this came out of nowhere. And it really didn't come out of nowhere. It really came out of the lack of trust and that um, lack of feeling like they can come to us or resolve conflict inside of the salon. And they just end up getting pushed out because they feel like that's easier. And we know that it's good for some people, right? Going to rent is good for some people, but it's not meant for everybody. So really making sure that we're working on these these skills so we can keep the line of communication open so we can avoid these detrimental things that happen in our business. We know three stylists leaving in our salon can be financially crippling for us. So as leaders, we really need to work on all of these things proactively on a regular basis so that we keep those really detrimental things from happening inside of our business. And of course, growth is going to happen for our team members and we want to cheer them on and we want to help them to that next level. But when we are continually helping them grow and find fulfillment in our business is when they want to stay in our business. So this is why, you know, balancing the leadership and working behind the chair thing has to be such a fluid thing because we do have to actively work on all of these things to maintain the business and keep it at a level that it needs to be in order to stay open and in in order to retain our team. So when we talk about active listening, we want to know that this means we're not going to interrupt them. We're not thinking about what we're going to say next and that we refrain from judgment and reactive responses, and we have to understand their perspective. I think a lot of times when team members come to us with issues and problems, especially complaining about things that like we know are just a part of business, right? Like sometimes we've run out of color. Sometimes, you know, clients no show. Sometimes clients, you know, cancel at the last minute. Like these are all things that happen that trigger our stylists. Sometimes our stylists don't get, you know, a a certain response that they want from, you know, or certain responsibilities from us because we know they aren't, they aren't ready. But when we are, you know, getting this feedback, it is so, I would say, just human response to get defensive. And as a leader, we can't get defensive. And that's the part where we have to take the emotion out of our business. We have to take the ego out. 
And I think a lot of salon owners run their business on ego. It's very easy to run your business on ego. I mean, a lot of us opened our business out of ego. So when we remove that part, which is very difficult, it takes practice. It allows you to truly really practice active listening because we're not going into the conversation defensive and we truly are coming from a place of resolution and not reactivity. So building empathy is really important. And I think there is, there's a difference between being empathetic and being a pushover and finding that balance for you as a leader is really important. We can still put ourselves in our team member's shoes, but still hold them accountable to our standards, right? And when we can put ourselves in their shoes, and I think for a lot of us, it's hard to remember where we were when we think about our stylist, when we were in their place, right? Because we've pushed through and grown our capacity so much that sometimes it's hard to remember what it's like to be a stylist or even the struggles that stylists face because they seem so minuscule compared to what we deal with on a regular basis. For example, you know, having a difficulty, uh, like a difficult situation with a client. Like as an owner, we deal with unhappy clients on a massive scale, right? Because we're dealing with everyone's clients. But for a stylist, they're not dealing and they haven't experienced that disruption in their business on the level that we have. So when they have clients that are complaining or doing certain things, it's going to trigger them in a much different way than we're triggered. And it's going to be harder for them to deal with certain things because they've never experienced it before. So remembering that sometimes it's a stylist first, right? When we remember about having firsts, it allows us to be empathetic. What was it like when you first experienced A, B, and C? And when we go back to that place of remembering, like, I remember my first time. I remember the first time I messed up somebody's haircut. I remember the first time that I messed up somebody's color. I remember the first time I had a whole day call out and I made no money, right? Like when we go back to those places of first, then it brings us back to those feelings and emotions that we felt in that time, which helps us put ourselves in that stylist's shoes, which helps us coach and guide them through the feelings that they're having. As leaders, we have to remember we can emotionally regulate ourselves and take the emotion out of our business, right? But for stylists, sometimes they just run their business on all emotion. And that's what a lot of people do. They run their business out of fear. They run their businesses out of emotion and they run their business out of reactivity, which is kind of like on autopilot, right? They don't let that co- that consciousness come through or that critical thinking come through. They're just quick to respond by the way they feel. And that's something as a leader, we need to shift for them because making decisions based on feelings, which feelings are fleeting. And usually when we make a decision based on a feeling, there's usually something that is also going to accompany it, which is regret. And when we can allow critical thinking to come through and we can allow emotional regulation, which we talked about last time, it allows us to kind of pause and make decisions that are going to create more of a better outcome for ourselves. And that's something that really is something that is learned over time, but we can also help build this with our team members. Also helping our team build empathy. I mean, how many times has somebody come to you? I don't know how all of you have been salon owners and they're really upset by the way that somebody said something to them. Like, oh my God, I can't believe this other stylist said this to me, or this other stylist was so rude to me in the salon today. She just, she snapped at me. You know, when we know that usually people's responses are based on what they are experiencing in their current personal life. And it really has nothing to do with the other person, right? We know that like as a leader, like we know that people's responses are usually based on their own reactivity. And sometimes it can come across as it being personal to the person that is experiencing the other end of that reactivity. 
So when we teach our team members about empathy and like give them the questions to ask themselves when maybe they don't have a great outcome or a great experience with team members in the salon, like I wonder where they're coming from. What's happening in their personal life that is making them respond in this way? It allows them to kind of understand and practice empathy more on just like a basic level and start building that empathy skill. So we have to try to understand their feelings. We have to try to understand their motivations and we have to try to understand their needs. We need to acknowledge their emotions and concerns, and then we can foster that connection and trust. So when we know that somebody is usually basing their actions on their feelings, then as the leader, we can ask the really hard questions. Like, you know, if somebody's upset about something, why are you feeling this way? What triggered you to, you know, react in the way that you did? Um, What was your motivation behind why you made that decision? Or what was your thought process behind why you made that decision? When we ask the right questions, when it comes to holding our team accountable, What ends up happening is it allows our team to work through the process and understand themselves and why they made the decision that they made or why they reacted in the way that they reacted. Because a lot of times people don't know why they're living on autopilot and they're just quick to respond. So when we start asking the right questions and really coaching our team, then it allows them to start really building self-awareness. Like I know my triggers like in the salon, like I know that I can't deal with unhappy clients who are entitled. Do not give them to me because if you give them to me, I will not be nice to them. I know this. It's a trigger of mine. I can't stand uh, people who are rude to my team members, uh, people who are entitled, who think that they should get all these things for free because of a simple mistake or, you know, people that just aren't polite. So what do I do? I hand it off. I hand it off to my manager, right? Because I know this is a trigger of mine. I know it's not something that I can handle like in a professional way at times um, because I'm very protective of my team. And it's the same thing for our stylists. Like our stylists are going to have triggers too. They're going to have certain types of clients that they shouldn't be taking. They're going to have certain situations that shouldn't be handled by them that should be handled by you, the owner or management, right? Right because it's their trigger. But the only way that we're going to understand what those triggers are, are by asking the hard questions. And usually they stem from past trauma, past experiences at other salons, trauma from other jobs that they've had, trauma from, you know, other experiences they've had with clients because it just was so detrimental to their, you know, the way they, you know, their confidence or the way that they handle things or even their mental health, right? So when we ask the right questions, it gets them to dig deep and to think deep. And that's what we want for our team members. We want them to think deep because that's where growth happens, right? We cannot prevent negative things for our team members. We just can't. We don't want to do that because the negative things that happen on their day to day is going to coach them up or it's going to coach them out. And that's what our job is as a salon owner. Coaching up means that you're coaching them and they're willing to elevate themselves. They're willing to elevate their mindset. They're willing to learn and grow and they're willing to be their best. Coaching out, you're doing the same thing where you're asking the hard questions and they are all full of ego and they don't want to grow. So those are our two main focuses for our team members, right? Coach up or coach out. And when we know that, it's it's allowing us to do our job because it's putting the responsibility of their business and the way that they are in their hands, right? Because they have a choice. It's their choice then. But when we talk about empathy, like this is something that when you're coaching somebody up, This is one of those things that they have to have. If you have somebody in your business who cannot learn empathy or does not have empathy, then you need to coach them out, okay? Okay, and this is another thing that's really big for our, just our leadership is communication. And I think one thing to understand is every single person in our salon is going to need to be communicated in a different way. We know we can have a meeting with every single person inside of our business 
And each person is going to hear something different from the meeting. It's like telephone, right? Because people need and have different types of communication styles. They just do. And because, and this is going on a deep level, because of past trauma, because of the way that their reactivity is, every single person has a different reactive response. Every single person has different triggers. So they're even going to take things on and hear things differently, even though they all hear the same thing, right? So, you know, let's just talk about dress code, for example. Like you have a meeting on dress code because people in your salon are just not, they're just not adhering to the dress code. You're going to have some people that are going to be like, oh yeah, okay, no problem. I I have no problem doing that. And then you're going to have somebody think like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that she's making this meeting about me. She's just talking to me. She doesn't think that my dress code is up to par. I can't believe that she's doing this. They make their own stories. Our ego creates stories in our head. So every person is going to have a different thought process to the things that we say to them. So I think this is why really understanding our team on a dynamic level is really important. So understanding what their initial reactive response is and understanding, you know, what, you know, what their thought process is, how they feel in our business and really maintaining that open communication because that's going to encourage open dialogue, right? And really understanding that the way that we say things is really important. So, um, you know, if you feel that you have a really different dynamic amongst all of your team members, maybe group meetings isn't the best. If you, you know, have more success with one-on-ones, then do one-on-ones. But I think really like as a, as an owner, we need to kind of like dig in, especially with your, with your you and me's and your one-on-one meetings, really kind of dive into the thought process and how your team responds and where they're coming from, I think is really important. So we have to make an effort to ensure that all parties can express their thoughts, feelings without fear or judgment. And we need to clearly and calmly articulate. And we also have to really be responsive to all viewpoints that come our way. I mean, we all know what what's happening in here. Like, there are times where my team member comes to me and I'm like, are you really coming to me with this? This is so stupid. Like, I can't believe you're wasting my time. Like, these are the thought processes I have, right? Like, I don't say that, but like, we all have those times where we're like, oh my God, I just don't even feel like dealing with this right now. Like, this is just such a time suck. This is an energy suck. But for our team, like that one team member, it might be like a huge deal. So, you know, we have to remember that you know, we have to like calmly and be receptive and be like, oh, I I hear your concerns. Like, I'll totally take care of this. Thank you for bringing this to me, even though it may be the silliest thing. And you're like, oh, this is a waste of time. We always have to make sure that they feel entrusted to come to us with the things that they want to share and vice versa. So staying calm and composed, manage your emotions. So um, I, when I first opened my salon, I was, I was fight reactivity. So I literally was just like sharp tongued. I had no empathy. Um, I made my team member, I belittled them all the time. I made them feel like less than, like they weren't important because that's how I was treated when I worked at a salon. It was just what I learned. And I took on all of these toxic traits from my past salon owner, which I was with him for 10 years. Because I just saw what he had. He had two thriving, successful salons and what he was doing was working, obviously. So I needed to manage and do the same. And in reality, like that doesn't, this doesn't feel good for us and it doesn't feel good for our team and it doesn't build that culture. I think um, how many of you have had like a culture makeover since you've opened your salon? My culture was so toxic before and I could walk into my space and I could just feel like the negative energy when I, when I first opened my salon, it's like, Oh, I didn't even want to be there. Now I walk into my salon and it's just like, you can just feel the positive energy radiating off of everybody and everyone's happy. And I think as a salon owner, we have to find really things that bring us joy and that bring us fulfillment. And I think one of the things for me personally, and I'm sure all of you can relate is having that safe 
positive space where people can come and truly just be artistic and really just like thrive, right? And like be happy and like, yeah, deal and struggle with things that are normal to deal and struggle with when it comes to growing their career, but overall feel supported and feel like they matter. And I feel like that's something that's so powerful and being able to stay calm and composed and us being able